From my house to yours, it's Art with Mr. Suspanic. And welcome back, everybody. What we are going to be making today is something called a printing plate. What you're looking at right here are the supplies that you will need in order to make a super successful printing plate. What you're looking at all the way to the right is a cereal box. Now, let's just say you have cereal boxes, but you cannot use it right now. There are all different types of things you could use besides a cereal box. You could use any type of cardboard, maybe somebody got a delivery from home, uh, maybe a bakery box, all different kinds of cardboard. You can even use a paper, but it cannot be printed from a paper or from a printer. It should be paper that's a little bit thicker, almost like a cardboard or a heavier, thicker paper. So if you don't have that, let me know by an email and hopefully I can give you some more suggestions. But we also have a pencil or a marker. Basically what that's for is to draw your design. If you do not have a marker or a pencil, you can use a pen. There's lots of alternatives to use to draw. You're gonna need a pair of scissors. Now you're looking at glue and tape. Glue's the best choice. If you do not have glue, like I have a glue stick, you could use liquid glue. If you don't have glue, you can also use tape. Tape is probably the second best option. So hopefully you can use glue or tape, any kind of tape. It could be painter's tape, duct tape, any kind of tape. And finally, foil. Foil is gonna play a big part of this printing plate project, which you will see at the end. But if you have these supplies or anything close to these supplies, you will make a super successful printing plate. So let's get to how we're gonna make this printing plate. The first thing I need to do is take this cereal box and try your best to keep this whole entire piece as one. So what we're gonna do is cut on the corner here, here, and here. And this will also give you some leftover pieces here, which we're probably not gonna need, and you'll probably have the back also, but we're just looking to have this huge front piece or this huge back piece. All right, so you can see I did not do a perfect job and it's perfectly fine. It does not have to be perfect. You'll see there's gonna be some parts that might be a little challenging to cut. I didn't cut, I started to cut right here on the corner. But as you see, I cut a little bit into the side. Again, perfectly fine. It's not gonna make much of a difference. And so I, this is the part I'm gonna use, but you also have other pieces too that you can use to make even more printing plates. So once you have your printing plate made, the next thing you're going to want to do is take this piece, fold it in half like a book. Try your best to even it out so it's both sides have equal amounts of space. I always like to hold this down nice and tight, lay this down the table, and this bumpy end right here, I'm going to take my hand while still pinching this down, smush down that bubble, and push down the bubble, and then push down the bubble, never letting go, and then we got a nice, awesome fold. This fold line right here is going to tell you where you should cut. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, I have two pieces, kind of equal size. I'm gonna use this piece. And the only reason I chose this piece is because this piece kind of has this little bend from the top of the cereal box. So I'm gonna use this to build the things on my printing plate. This, this is gonna be what my printing plate is. I'm not much of a fan of these curvy, bumpy, but again, it's not gonna matter. But I'm just gonna go and make this perfect. We wanna make it, I don't know, this could be a good size. So what I'm gonna do is just straighten out with my scissors the bumpy ends. And again, you don't have to worry about this. This is just my preference, just to make it a little bit nicer and neater. And you could throw these out or keep these. You might need these later. So there is my awesome printing plate. Okay, for your printing plate design, I'm gonna give you three choices. Choice number one, you can make a Star Wars character. I'm gonna say focus more on R2-D2. So that's choice one, make a three-dimensional R2-D2 printing plate, which I'm gonna make first. Choice number two is to make a portrait. 
making sure that you have the head shape, hair if you have it, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and maybe even a neck. Option number three is to make your house, making sure that you have the actual shape of your house. A roof, do you have chimneys? How many windows do you have in the front? How many doors do you have? Are there windows on your doors? Are there other details? That's super important to think about when you're making your house. Same thing for the details for your face. What do your eyes look like? What's the shape of your eyes? Your eyebrows, the kind of hair you have. Is it curly? Is it straight? And then R2-D2, he has details also to make it look more like R2-D2. So what I'm gonna do on my printing plate pieces paper right here is draw R2-D2. So now when I make R2-D2, now I'm actually gonna extend a little bit more. It does not have to be R2-D2. It could be any Star Wars character. So I'm just gonna make R2-D2, but again, you can make any Star Wars character you would like. So when I make my R2-D2, I'm gonna draw it but you're gonna notice that when I make the pieces of R2-D2, they are not going to be touching each other. So what I'm gonna start off first with is this kind of oval shape, and this is going to be the body of R2-D2. After that, I'm gonna make that dome, but now watch, remember what I said, I'm going to draw the bottom of the dome close to the top of R2-D2's body, and then curve it up like so for the head of R2-D2. After I make the head of R2-D2, I am going to make the arms of R2-D2 going down close to the body, just like this. I'm gonna copy the exact same thing I did on this side because he, R2-D2, is pretty symmetrical, which means whatever is on the left side is on the right, besides his buttons and lights. Underneath R2-D2, we're gonna make, again, a straight line, almost looking like a belt and I'm gonna curve it down a little bit, kind of like an upside down roof, just like that. I'm gonna make a little tiny square. Again, making sure, leave that space. You do not want any of these pieces touching. Then I'm gonna make a straight line down here, make it pretty long, and I'm gonna go down like so, go up a little bit, angle it, and that's gonna be where he stands on the ground. just like that. And if you want, you can make the little stick that goes in front of him. I'm just gonna leave it, I'm not gonna make that part. So that's the basic pieces of R2-D2. So what I need to do right now is cut this out. So I just have the base of R2-D2. You can see there's not a lot of detail. There's no little spots for where the lights are going to be or any of the detail, just the shape of R2-D2. We're gonna put the detail of R2-D2 on in a little bit. But what I need to do first is glue this part of R2-D2, all these pieces I just cut out onto our printing plate. So let's give this a shot. You can see that I'm going to be using a glue stick. Again, any kind of glue will work. That's your best choice. If not, any kind of tape is your second best option. Let's give this a shot. So as you can see, I put some parts flipped over so you can see just how I glued this together. You can see that all of these parts, this part's hard to see, but the edge is right here. It's kind of hard to see. I wonder if I can go closer. You can see that the edge of that cardboard, no edges are touching each other. There's a space between every single piece of cardboard. That is super important. That's how we drew it, right? 
leaving space between. That's what's gonna help us give us our lines when we make our printing from our printing plate. So that's why I kind of flipped the cardboard over on the other side so you can actually see the cardboard a little bit better. So right now, like I said, I have the R2-D2 foundation, the base of R2-D2, with not any detail or very little detail on my printing plate. What I need to do now is figure out where and what kind of details I'm gonna put on R2-D2 to make it look more like R2-D2. So the best way to do that is to take all of this extra cardboard from when I cut out the R2-D2 base and figure out what kind of shapes do I want? Like the lights are usually rectangles or squares. And that's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep it to rectangles and squares. There might be a couple circles here and there, but I'm just gonna make sure that when I do draw them, I don't draw them super tiny because it's gonna be very hard to cut out super tiny shapes. So I'm gonna make them kind of small, but big enough so it's a little bit easy for me to cut. I don't wanna cut my fingers, I wanna be safe. So I'm not gonna draw super big shapes, but I'm not gonna make them super tiny either. Here we go. I cut out a bunch of shapes, little rectangles, squares. I even made this circle. Basically how I made this circle is I just cut out a square, a little tiny square, and I cut out the corners, a little bit of the corner. And then I turned it and I cut out a little bit of the corner and a little bit of the corner and over and over and over again. If you just keep on cutting a little tiny bit of the corner, you will end up getting this awesome circle. So that's how I made the circles. Rectangles, squares, those are pretty simple to cut out, especially with these scraps. So what I need to do next is assemble, put together these pieces to make it look more like R2-D2. Here we go. Pretty happy with that layout. So you can see, I just didn't glue it down right away because if for some reason I say, you know what, I don't like this one, maybe I'll put this one, I can always move it around. And then when I am happy with it, then I will know exactly where everything goes. And again, make sure that all of these pieces have space between them. That's what's going to give you the lines when you make your print. So you can see that none of these pieces are touching each other, even on R2-D2's head. So what I need to do next is glue everything down and then I will be ready for the next step. Is assembled. The next step is to take foil and cover this printing plate and there's a reason why which you will see in a few seconds. You see that I have my piece of foil about two to three fingers bigger than the actual printing plate. The reason why we want that to be bigger is that so when we do cover what I just glued down the extra can wrap around the back and will stay sticking, attached to the actual printing plate. So I'm gonna do this quickly and I'll show you what we'll do next. Right now you're probably looking at that like, what in the world did you do? Well, this is what we need to do now. We need to start from the inside with our fingers, not our point, not our nails, but the softer part where your fingerprints are and start rubbing from the inside and pushing our way out. This is going to smooth out all those extra pieces. So you can see that I'm kind of holding my printing plate down. And as I'm doing this, you can almost start seeing the R2-D2 that we glued down earlier through the foil. So you can see always from the inside, push down and out. This will flatten and smooth out that foil. The best part about foil is that it's a very soft metal. So you can definitely stretch it out, but you have to be careful because it can rip easily. So you need to be careful with that. Don't go too fast. We don't want to rip this foil. Take your time. And now you can almost start seeing the R2-D2 that we put down earlier. 
So what I need to do next is get a pencil and use the eraser part. This is your best choice because this soft eraser will not really rip or scratch this foil. If you use your fingertips or your fingernails, it might rip it. I would maybe suggest the eraser first, but if it doesn't work, if you don't have an eraser, try to find something soft and you could maybe use the tip of your finger. And what I'm gonna do is start pushing down the edges of my foil around the edges of this cardboard. And you can start seeing a little bit better of an edge to all my cardboard. This is gonna push everything down around it so that when we do make our print, this plate will be awesome. So I'm going all around the edges. It's almost like tracing, like a template. So I'm going all the way around the outsides first. That base of R2D2 that we did in the beginning. All the way around, make sure you get the sides, all the pieces. And you can start seeing pretty sweet looking printing plate so far. Now the cardboard on top of the R2D2 base. You need to be a little bit careful because we don't want to stretch or rip the cardboard. So just take your time and go all around with a softened eraser or a fingertip. But you need to be careful if you use that fingertip. We don't want to rip or scratch this foil. So you can start seeing, hopefully, this R2D2 start coming to life. So there we go. You can see that it's actually lifted up a little bit. Pretty awesome, right? The best part about this printing plate is that you can make countless numbers of prints. The reason why we use foil is because you can take marker color in your printing plate with marker, but it must be a water soluble marker. Something like a Crayola marker, those are probably your best chance. And I'm gonna do that, but after I do the marker, I'm gonna also do other ways of making prints. So let me get some water soluble markers. So I got some water soluble markers, Crayola style markers, and what I'm going to do is start coloring my R2D2. Now, it may not be exactly what R2D2 looks like, the colors may not be exactly like it, but I think you'll get the hint. Here we go. So I just colored in my R2-D2 printing plate with water-soluble markers. The next thing that I'm going to do is transfer this awesome coloring to a piece of paper. We're probably saying, but the marker's already dry. I know. So what I'm going to do next is get a white piece of paper. Now again, it could be any color, but I think white will turn out the best for this one. I'm going to get a white piece of paper. I'm going to get a wet paper towel, not a soaking, dripping wet paper towel, but when you get it wet, squeeze out most of the water. And what I'm gonna do is brush this paper and get it kind of wet, not so wet that it rips, but just kind of wet so that it will pick up the colored marker and transfer it to this printing plate. From the printing plate to the paper. Let's give this a shot. <music> So you may have noticed when I was rubbing, I actually grabbed a second piece of paper. The reason why is because I first started tapping on it and it seemed to work pretty good, but I wanted to actually rub down onto it. And if I were to rub down on that wet piece of paper, it would have ripped pretty easy. So I just grabbed a brand new dry piece of paper, put it on top and was able to rub all over the spring plate. Notice how I'm holding it in place. If I just did this, that's not gonna help much. So if you hold it down and rub the paper down, that will help you transfer the prints to your paper. So here we go. Let's see how this turns out. This was the paper that I used to help push down. 
and I'm going to carefully, because it's still wet, peel away. And you can see that I still have some color in there and those little cracks and grooves actually looks pretty cool, I think. And on this side, I got my awesome R2-D2 print. So I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Remember, this is water soluble. If you wanna keep it on there, that's awesome. If you don't wanna keep it on there, wash it off. Just get some water and just kind of rub it away, but be careful because it is cardboard on the back. But you just wanna maybe get like a wet paper towel and kind of rub away and get rid of that. But again, you're not gonna see any of that. Let me show you something that you can do to transfer a print, even if you do not have water soluble markers. You can, again, get any color piece of paper. I'm gonna go with white and put it right down over top of my printing plate. I'm going to get some crayons right here. And I'm going to do something called a crayon rubbing. The easiest, best way is to hopefully peel the paper off your crayon, lay your crayon down on its side, and rub away. It's awesome because you can press down hard and it makes a super successful print. If for some reason you are not able to rip the paper off, you could still use this, but don't press hard because the edges will color and you really won't see your print very well. But if you can, you don't need to press down hard and you can go this way, that way, any way you want. But I'm gonna use a crayon down on its side and I'm gonna rub all different cuts ways and you're gonna see how my print will transfer. Here we go. Make sure before you actually do your print that you're holding down the printing plate and the paper at the same time. Because if your paper slides around, your print's gonna move around. It's almost like taking an actual stamp and rubbing the stamp. It's not gonna show up very well. So it's super important. Hold down the paper and the stamp at the same time and with your other hand, do the rubbing. Here we go. So I have a print two different ways. This one was done by coloring over top of our printing plate first with water soluble marker, then wetting this paper with a wet paper towel, putting that on top and rubbing over top of it and transferring the marker to the white paper. This one was done with a crayon with a piece of paper over top, hopefully taking a crayon's paper off and rubbing the side in many different ways. And the harder you press, the better the transfer. But remember, if you cannot take the paper off, do not push hard because the transfer for some reason does not work well. If you have something like this, that's cool, but you can also make more of a background, kind of like this, how I made a cool colored background. You could add more details if you'd like. Possibilities are endless. So I cannot wait to see your awesome prints. I would also love to see your printing plate. Send it to your Google Classroom folder. Send it to my email. I really wait, I cannot wait to see these awesome projects. Till next week, friends, have a great week.